Greetings, everybody. It's Jim. You know, you'd have to be living under a rock to have never heard of Robo Rally. The game caught steam in the 1990s and ended up winning an Origins Award. Uh, the game is just one of those games that no matter what your age or what kind of gaming you're normally into, this brings everybody to the table and they had a lot of fun. And of course it didn't hurt that the creator of the game was none other than Richard Garfield, the creator of Magic the Gathering. But I, during the research for the game I'm about to talk to you about today, am starting to wonder... Did Richard have some influence from this game in the 80s? I think there are some similarities to explore. So today, I'm going to be unboxing with you a cherry mint version of Rivets from Metagaming. So here's my mint copy of Rivets right here, uh, shrink-wrapped, and uh, the box is in great shape. It's not scrunched at all. Uh, you know, this is not one of the games I expected to get, though. Now, I mean, a year ago, I was being a lot more picky. I mean, I'm not just, I wasn't trying to get the entire collection like I pretty much am locked into now. I mean, like uh, Fantasy Trap, I was just trying to get the Melee book um, that I had when I was a kid, and here's all my... Here's all the games that I've got for the micro game line. Of course, that's expanded to the SPI and Task Force games as well. But I was never going to get this because it was just cartoony. Not that I have a problem with cartoon games, because Steve Jackson Games has a game called Globo that I liked a lot. Um, so this wouldn't bother me. It's just I wanted the more serious ones. So if I was going to dive in, I wanted to play more of the Dimension Demons and such like that. Um, but anyway, the thing about this game is it has much more than just one edition. OK, a lot of those micro games just died after one edition and that was it. This definitely had more than one edition. So it was a popular game. Uh, and I looked online, just seeing reviews of it, and they talked about what the game was about. And basically, you're programming these robots, just like in Robo Rally. So that's where I think the similarities lie. Now, I think it's probably going to be more complicated, believe not, even though it's a little micro game than Robo Rally. But we'll find out when I read the rules. But let's uh, go. Let's clear this on the right hand side and let's read what we've got here. Um, boppers were mass produced robotic war machines. You call them boppers? Okay. When the final war ended and they were all they were all that was left, everyone was dead. But the boppers kept on fighting. After all, with the intelligence of can openers, what would you expect? Okay. Rivets is a two-player tactical level science fiction game of robotic warfare in the 22nd century. Uh, players select their robot armies, select set their programs, and send them out to destroy the enemy computer complex. Rivets is a fast-playing and easy-to-learn game with a humorous style. Games are quick and even. Uh, the, our games are quick, even if the robots are a bit dumb. Okay, so yeah, it's basically like Robo Rally. I mean, you look at the picture of Robo Rally again. Let me see if I can find that. Oh, that's Rivets. No, no, that's Columbia Games. There it is. Um, and basically, yeah, this basically because of all the mistakes that you make in programming them, uh, that can definitely happen. So let's just go through it here. I will put things on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, for you for close-ups and we're just going to open it here so that's done and of course the uh ever uh present uh trick to keep the keep the uh keep uh you can't see it here like it could before there we go you put 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 thumbs on both sides of it and then lift up i can't show it to you unfortunately but that's the way, way to do it so you don't um cram this you know that's the best way otherwise you're just going to rip it or something like that so here we go. Now, this is sealed package. Now, the thing is, does it come with the die? And the answer is yes, it does. This one came with the die. Now, I don't know if they just, because uh, if you see my other videos, whenever it said die, how it came with the die and they didn't have it for whatever reason, it would just scribble it out. Now, I don't know if that was common or it was just a few games that they had to do that with or whatever. Um, I, I like to know. If you know, leave a comment below. Maybe you worked for them. I don't know. But we've got the little die right here. And then we've got a uh, little baggy. Uh, so here we go with the uh, Rivets rule book. And it's your standard uh, micro gaming rule book. And this game is invented by Robert Taylor and illustrated by Brian Wilson. Um, and uh, it's 1979. Uh, by metagame and, and speaking of artists i just want to show this up here uh of course that's phil folio um i hope i say his name correctly uh that did robo rally he did he was very prominent in the 1990s he did some cards for magic the gathering um just his style was definitely well known and he had uh he had some comics for uh games that was uh, very well. Now, now I can't think of the title of them. If you know the title for Phil Folio's work, put it down below. Maybe even with a link. Do him some favors. I met him at Origins. He's a great guy. 
Uh, so here we go. Uh, as far as the rule book goes, um, you know, standard standard uh, metagaming rule book. Uh, this is just basic paper on this edition. Um, nothing like uh, n n none of the shiny paper that you get. But this is the 1979 version. But it's very well written, and the, the illustrations are very clear. So that's good. Um, so let's see. Let's. Uh, I'll go over the uh, rules in a little bit here. Let's go over. The, now there's two, two sets of counters here. Now this is different. So now the counters here are all silhouettes. Uh, and you'll see a close up over here. But they're all silhouettes here, uh, one sided, um, big numbers. You can definitely see what's what as far as the numbers go. As far as the silhouettes go, maybe not so much. I don't know. I guess you could see what's going on here. They're really cramming that, though. Really cramming that. Um, maybe these ones are a little bit better to read. These ones are the red, orange on white. Maybe a little bit, even though the blue on white's fine to read, too. But uh, when it comes to the pictures of the robots of silhouettes, that's the only thing I don't like about silhouettes. I even noticed that in my game, Triads, I thought about using silhouettes. I'm like, eh, that's not really saying showing you what it is exactly. It's not as easy. Uh, luckily for printing and stuff like that, even with the detail, uh, I think it shows up better. I've done some prototypes for uh, making real counters um, through a few companies here. So that was, so I, I found that, that that worked out well, uh, just having not silhouettes. So let's take a look at the map. The map is not the metagames, is not textured at all. But they again, they always use a different color. This one's got a nice little tan, and um, just like a night. Uh, one game thing I notice about a lot of these micro games or battle games in general, uh, there's not a lot of terrain terrain to get in the way. You know, a, a lot of war games do have terrain. Usually, when you drill down to uh, you know, battles of uh, platoons and stuff like that. But even other games, like in Columbia Games as games, there's a lot of terrain all around. But in a lot of battle games, you'll notice that like Dimension Demons, they just they do it spar sparsely. And I guess it's just to make sure the game flows fast because terrain always does have a tendency to bog games down because you're looking at the map. You really got to learn the map when you're playing the game. Sometimes you're not learning the game as much as you're learning the map, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying it definitely is something to keep keep track of. Um, so let's see if I can uh, go through these, uh, these uh, comp you know, the rules here and just see if anything takes off here on, on my mind. Initial programming, programming units. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to read that because, I mean, basically it is telling me that this is the idea of what, what these uh, robots do. Now, what do you got to write it down on a piece of paper? Um, number of build points is there... Uh, how much hit points they have. I wonder, I wish they would have a, an example of a, uh, that's one thing I don't have, have is an exa a quick example of a, um, of a turn or of a uh, program. Uh, so I guess I'll have to read that about it because I know that in Robo Rally, you just use cards and you just choose them and then you try to remember how the, how the, everything moves. Um, but basically that is, you know, it's just a basic rule book. It's only about 20 pages long. There's a couple scenarios in there. Um, basic CRTs, combat result tables. And uh, I do like uh, the the artwork is pretty good. You know, I mean, as much as the cover made them look stupid, um, but it is just part of it. I mean, you know, they they don't have uh, the goofy eyes or anything like that, actually. They're just just, uh, just on the cover of the game, they just seem like they have eyes looking at them out the windows and stuff like that. Um but basically, that is the game. Uh, not much to it until I look at it. I really want to see what the programming looks like. But overall, it's standard micro gaming fair. I'm glad I got it. And that's the video. And I'll see you next time.